Created by Jim Lee and Brandon Choi, Cole Cash first appeared in Wildcats number 1 in 1992, one of the first new titles out of what was then a fledgling comic book publisher, Image Comics. The idea behind Image was that of creator control. And so even though Image Comics was publishing the books, Wildcats and Grifter were owned by Jim Lee. This changed in 1998 when Jim Lee sold his Image publishing imprint Wildstorm Productions, a, a name formed as a portmanteau of Wildcats and Stormwatch, to DC Comics. And then he went to work for them as well, although it wouldn't be fully solidified until 1999. Despite being owned by DC Comics, Wildstorm remained a separate universe from DC's other offerings. That was until many years later when DC decided to roll it into their multiverse and called the Wildstorm universe quote-unquote Earth-50. Around the time of his sale, Lee himself signed on with DC Comics, giving the Wildstorm imprint a new lease on life as the characters through lulls over the years continued to be used, even into the fall of 2020. Grifter's had a really interesting publication ride, and he's one of the few characters to jump publishers and still be used to this day. In preparation for issue 101, let's dive into the history and the origin of Grifter. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics. Whether you've been with me for a while or it's your first time here, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends so you don't miss the content I upload every few days. Let's jump into the story. Grifter is an awesome character and has always been one of my favorites from Image Comics and from the Wildcats team, and so it's great to see him continue to be used. Grifter's an expert mercenary, assassin, and just all-around badass. He holds his Vulcan Arms Division PP-30 as a Kimbo to take out entire squadrons of bad guys single-handedly. He has help from his ballistic trench coat and an advanced ballistic micro-mesh weave face covering which doubles as a gas mask and has built-in lenses that equip him with telescoping, IR, and night vision filters. Coupled with his powers, which we'll talk about in a moment, give him an immense tactical advantage. The story of Grifter and really the moniker he chose for himself start from a young age. His father would set up cons and swindle people out of money and he would take Cole along, even as young as six years old, to help him out. One day, his father, named Jacob, swindled the mob and Sam Del Grazzi murdered his father. After his father's death, Cole's mother actually married Del Grazzi, effectively marrying into the mob. Del Grazzi would beat Cole and his brother Max up regularly. They were stuck in an abusive household with a murderer. But not for long, because Cole ran away from home, where he wound up on the streets running cons and working as a wheelman for a crew of organized robbers. As a quick aside, there was a miniseries from 1997, right around this time in publication history, called Wildcats X-Men, where Cole was featured in the Silver Age issue. Cole was in a South American prison, released by Nick Fury, and actually joined up with S.H.I.E.L.D. It's a wild story that involves Jean Grey, the Brood, and none other than Mr. Sinister. Anyhow, one day, Cole saved the life of an FBI agent by the name of Joseph Brockmeyer, and instead of taking Cole to jail, Agent Brockmeyer said, You have a choice. You can either go to prison, or you can join up with a covert agency and start doing field work. So he chose the agency. It was a clandestine operation called I.O., meaning International Operations. So now working with I.O., Cole started training with a guy named Mark Clayton, a guy who would later be called Backlash. He also met John Lynch, along with Arclight, and Michael Cray, a.k.a. Deathblow, as well as Jackson Dane, who'd go on to lead Wetworks. 1994's Team 7 Issue 1 reveals that Cash was in the U.S. Army Special Forces prior to linking up with Team 7, where he was given the codename Deadeye. He had some proto-lenses here, x-ray goggles that he says he bought off the back of a comic book. So Deadeye and Team 7 were exposed to this chemical on one operation, which contains something that in Image Comics mythos grants people psionic abilities. It's a chemical called Gen Factor. Team 7 started to develop these various extra and paranormal powers, although some of them broke down mentally from it and actually killed themselves. The exposure gave Cole telepathy and telekinetic abilities, and those that survived the exposure were called Gen 12. After Cole left, I.O. used Gen 12's progeny, their children, and they were called Gen 13. Now having quit I.O., Cole ran into an alluring lady named Zealot, and they formed a relationship together. Zealot is an alien named Lady Zana, who's from a species called Carabim. And the Carabim had been at war with the Daemonites, another alien species, and their leader, Hellspont, for centuries. We're at war, a holy war that eventually found its way to Earth's doorstep, and Lord Emp, now he's Jacob Marlowe, and his Carab, who continue to fight Hellspont and the Daemonites on Earth from the shadows. Zealot is from the planet Carab, part of a clan of Carabim warriors known as the Coda. When she met Cole, she started training him. 
teaching him the fighting arts of the Coda, as well as how to clear his mind and to manage his new powers. Later, even though Zealot and Cole broke up, they linked up with Jacob Marlowe and Void's wild covert action team, the Wildcats, to continue hunting down Daemonites on Earth. He helped them rescue Voodoo from a strip club, and one mission required the Wildcats to team up with the Daemonite Hightower, and this prompted Grifter to quit the Wildcats, once again becoming a mercenary in his first solo series. In his place, his brother Max joined up, calling himself Condition Red. His ex-girlfriend Zealot joined the Wild Core team run by Backlash. Max Cash, Cole's brother, died, and Grifter had to put down his own brother who returned from the dead as a zombie, and most of the Wildcats disbanded when they thought Zealot had also been killed. And this spiraled Cole into a period of depression fueled by liquor and parties, but he would come out of it and eventually joined up with Spartan and the Halo Corporation. In the miniseries Point Blank, a villain named Tao brainwashed Cole into assassinating John Lynch, the head of IO. Tao then mind-wiped Grifter and rendered him useless. In 2002, Marlow, Spartan, trained Edwin Dolby to be a second Grifter who would be able to take over Halo Corporation in his place. But this wouldn't last long because Cole's mind was fixed. When he awoke, Grifter went out to kill Tao, but instead of, instead of killing Tao, sent the villain to prison. But later, Grifter would end up shooting Tao right in the head anyway. In 2010, Grifter left this version of the team to join another team called The Authority. And then a massive change came to Grifter in the Wildstorm universe as the world ended and blended actually with another. Grifter first showed up in DC continuity in Flashpoint in 2011 for the New 52 where he was part of the Resistance before the three timelines became one. But his new story really started with his new miniseries. In DC's prime continuity, Cole was a Special Forces Sergeant Major in the US Army who deserted and went on to become a street grifter and con artist in New Orleans. The alien Daemonites abducted Cole and subjected him to 17 days of experimentation while they tried to take control of Cole both mentally and physically. That's what they do. They possess the humans' bodies like body snatchers, disguising themselves as regular humans. Cole managed to escape before the procedure was complete, but he was under for long enough to be able to tap into the Daemonites' telepathic conversations. He could sense when they were around and hear their thoughts. He was able to kill some of the Daemonites and escape. Unfortunately, because of the way they possess bodies, everyone thought the Daemonites were humans. So the people of Earth thought Cole was going around murdering people. So he was a wanted man, thought a domestic terrorist, and his own brother Max was assigned to bring him in. Because he's alive now in this continuity. On the run, he found a face mask in the storefront to wear to conceal his identity. And this is his iconic face mask that he wears. Max was seemingly killed and Cole ended up in the Pacific Northwest where he ran into his first DC comic superhero, Green Arrow. Later, it was Dinah Lance and Kurt Lance who recruited Cole to a new iteration of Team 7. And this new Team 7, which also included Amanda Waller, Alex Fairchild, and Slade Wilson, Deathstroke, was hunting down metahumans. They were interested in him, apparently for his quote-unquote ability to learn the underworld more or less instantly. On Team 7's last mission, they learned that the government was using Team 7 in their metahuman primary mission, using their intel to create a weapon that could be used against Superman. On that last mission, the metahuman weapon was activated, resulting in an entire island being sank, and, and in the aftermath, Team 7 disbanded. So Cole left too, and once again became a private military contractor, a mercenary once more. He was then recruited by international operations under John Lynch from Project Thunderbook. IO found extraterrestrial beings at an ancient burial site, and so they took the genetic material, grafted it to human DNA, and this material became known as Gen Active, and they implanted it into Cole and some others, and giving him those telekinetic, telepathic powers again. Later, Cole faked his own death to escape, and out on his own, he was trained in combat by Zealot, now calling herself Lucy Blaze. He then popped up in Tom King's Grayson series as part of a shadow council called the Syndicate, somewhere in the shadows of the spy game, a, a dark shadow cast between Spiral and Checkmate. Under DC's revival of the Wildstorm imprint in 2017, Grifter appeared in Warren Ellis' The Wildstorm series where he was recruited by Jacob Marlowe at Halo to undermine international operations. Jim Lee was making fashion photography variant covers at the time and he modeled Grifter after a Justin Bieber, Calvin Klein advertisement for issue 2. And he continues to work with the team as Halo, IO, and Skywatch conduct covert and corporate espionage and sabotage operations against each other. And it appears in the DC Rebirth era of DC Comics and in the wake of the Joker War that Grifter is not only back, which may or may not have something to do with his connections to Dick Grayson, now Nightwing again, He's in Gotham City in Batman issue number 101 and is employed by none other than Lucius Fox, one of the people in Batman's inner circle. 
But now with Jim Lee as the sole publisher at DC Comics after Dan Didio left, it's likely we'll see other Wildstorm characters move over to the mainline books like, is Superman in charge of the authority? But that's for another video, which means for now, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.